click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, now we are going to talk about that is how can we uh, that is estimate uh, the percentage or how can we quantitatively we estimate uh, the percentage of carbon and hydrogen that is being present in an organic compound. So let me discuss about this thing and uh, now uh, let me also talk about that is what are the main apparatus that are being used in this kind of uh, process so as to estimate the percentage of carbon and hydrogen in organic compound. So let me talk about that. So here is an apparatus that I am going to talk about and from which basically we will determine the percentage of uh, carbon and hydrogen that is being present in the organic compound. But uh, for a while, let me uh, talk about uh, this apparatus. So this apparatus is basically it consists of a furnace over here and uh, the whole uh, that is apparatus is basically sealed over here as you could see in this case from one side it has been sealed. So this also consists of this U tubes uh, and that consists of that is anhydrous magnesium perchlorate or we can use that is anhydrous calcium chloride. Along with that of here, it is basically already made uh, that is a KOH solution. So what are the use of it? Let me uh, talk about that also. But uh, the thing is that organic compound basically obviously we know that uh, if we pass a pure uh, dry oxygen through this, obviously it will react uh, with uh, the organic compound. But uh, the main thing is uh, if that organic compound consists of carbon and hydrogen, obviously it will consist of carbon and hydrogen, but the thing is we have to determine the percentage of it. So suppose uh, if that consists of more uh, carbon or any kind of carbon and hydrogen it contain, so that will basically react with the, the copper oxide that has been present in this furnace and that is also in the form of a coarse mixture that has been present in it. So therefore uh, that carbon obviously uh, that will react it with uh, that is uh, a COO. So that's the reason that uh, the COO will basically it will reduce and it will oxidize the carbon so as to form carbon dioxide. So meanwhile, if the organic compound consists of hydrogen, so that or uh, that hydrogen it will react with uh, that is again it will react with COO and the thing that produce uh, the product that we will produce is basically water. And that water and as well as uh, the carbon dioxide that will be moved through this uh, U tubes as you can see over here. So in this case, let me introduce that how the reaction will occur and uh, that only I'll, I'll come back to this point. So the thing is, so as I've said earlier also, that is suppose if it consists of carbon, so that carbon it will react it with uh, that is CuO and uh, because we are providing too much of heat, so obviously this uh, copper uh, oxide, it will or this cupric oxide, it will uh, basically it will uh, it will reduce and so that it will oxidize the carbon. So that there is that two moles of Cu along with that of that is CO2 will be obtained, but here I have to balance it. So this is what the uh, android I am just balancing the reaction and the product is what we have got is CO2. But uh, uh, not only the carbon, but also the hydrogen get reacted uh, with the, that is uh, CO. So in this case, basically the hydrogen is reacted with the cupric oxide. And uh, the thing is, we will get that is H2 as a byproduct. As well as the copper. But here we have to basically we have to balance the reaction, so that's the reason that I am using two moles of H that is reacted with the CO uh, so as to give you H2. So the product that we have got is basically CO2 and H2. So now what is the role of this two product that we have got over here? So that is what I could explain to you with the help of a diagram that is uh mentioned over here. So since it is basically anhydrous radiation per grade, so obviously we could say that uh, uh, this is basically the hydrating agent. Obviously, this will absorb water. So it consists of already a way uh, that is anhydrous magnesium perchlorate. So in this case, basically anhydrous magnesium perchlorate, or we could also use anhydrous calcium chloride. So that will absorb water, and that is what we could uh, that is. Uh, uh, can estimate the percentage of or can estimate the weight of H2 that is uh, that is being collected. So here yeah, basically the KOH solution is also playing a very vital role because uh, this KOH actually can absorb carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide that has been produced it will be absorbed by this KOH solution and uh, this KOH solution is already uh, we have weighted this thing and uh, that is uh, this weighed uh, KOH solution after the reaction it always obviously it will gain uh, that is uh, uh, a weight because the carbon dioxide is being uh, consumed or it has been absorbed in this KOH solution. So now this is what we have did and uh, the excess amount of uh, oxygen it will move through this uh, pipe or uh, that is uh, here basically calcium chloride is also been used so as to uh, that is so as to capture the excess amount of water but the thing is in this case only it has been done and we could estimate the percentage of hydrogen as well as carbon so now uh, the estimation is as follows that i could uh, measure over here so suppose if we have that is uh, if the compound that we have uh, we have took uh, in the that is in this chamber that i have mentioned over here earlier 
and suppose in that case we could say that is uh, the organic compound uh, that has a weight of suppose uh, we could say it as suppose m gram so this is the m gram of uh, the organic compound that we have taken and uh, so we could also estimate uh, the percentage or uh, the percentage of hydrogen and uh, that is the uh, carbon but uh, the thing is uh, while absorbing uh, that is uh, the hydrogen molecules by ammonium uh, magnesium perchlorate or uh, basically we could say that is magnesium perchlorate we could also determine the uh, weight of h2 so for that we know that is uh, for uh, since we are talking about uh, for hydrogen we can easily calculate that what will be the amount of hydrogen that has been present in the organic compound so that is we know that is 18 gram of uh, that is H2 suppose that will consist of basically 2 gram of hydrogen so that is what we know but suppose what uh, uh, the amount of uh, that is H2 that is been collected uh, through that is calcium uh, chloride is suppose it has been found to be M1 gram suppose M1 gram of H2 has been collected so it will consist how many gram of uh, hydrogen obviously cross multiplication we can do or we could also say that it will consist of 2 into m1 divided by 18 gram of hydrogen so this is what we can say that this much amount of hydrogen uh, is been uh, uh, present in the organic compound but suppose if we have to determine the percentage of uh, the hydrogen so it is very easy to calculate that is uh, the percentage of uh, uh, hydrogen that we could that is what we have to estimate is suppose uh, this much amount of hydrogen that we have got over the organic compound that we have taken that is m gram so therefore what we could say is that is 2 into m1 divided by 18 into m so this is how can we determine the percentage but for what we have to do is we have to multiply it by 100 so this is how we can determine the percentage of hydrogen so that is one of the one of the most easiest methods so is to determine the percentage of hydrogen so now let me talk about the next one that is how can we determine the percentage of carbon so for carbon the same thing that we have did for just like a calculation for the estimation of uh, hydrogen we can do the same thing so we know that the carbon dioxide that is suppose uh, if we take one mole of carbon dioxide and that uh, weights uh, that is 44 gram so we could say that is uh, 44 gram of uh, carbon dioxide it will consist of basically 12 gram of uh, carbon then uh, suppose uh, the carbon dioxide that has been collected uh, through the aqueous chemistry solution it is suppose it has been found to be m2 gram so suppose if m2 gram of carbon dioxide is been uh, collected so obviously it will consist of basically 12 into we could do a cross multiplication over here that is 12 into m2 the whole divided by 44 so this much gram of uh, carbon can be estimated or can be calculated uh, so this is what we have did when the organic compound was being treated with uh, CuO. But suppose if we have to determine the percentage of uh, that is carbon that has been present in the organic compound, and as I have mentioned earlier, that is we have uh, mentioned the weight of the organic compound is m gram. So therefore, the percentage of carbon is what we could get is so this is much of carbon that is what we have got the suppose if we have taken that is m1 or we have taken that is m gram of organic compound. So let me mention this as m gram and this is 12 into m2 divided by 44 into m and suppose if we have to determine the percentage so therefore we have to multiply it by 100 so this is what we could determine the percentage of that is carbon in the organic compound and that is what it was a very much simpler method so as to determine the both two elements so that's it friend this is what i want to mention about and that's it so this is how we can calculate so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope you'll share this video with the friends too so till then don't forget to subscribe thank you so much